Another edition of the S and D podcast. Uh, Dan here with Steve. Uh, what's up, Steve? How's it going this week? Uh, good. Can't complain. That's good. A lot. We're gonna have a fun packed show. By the way, we're sponsored by uh, Schmuck Sports, and tonight's uh, song is with the Vengeance. So we're gonna have a fun packed show. A yeah. lot of hockey Islanders are finally made the playoffs. Congratulations to them. The first time in seven years, long seven years. The Knicks have been dominating their first round against the uh, Celtics. And the Nets are uh, in a hard fight with uh, the Chicago Bulls. So a little fun pack show. We also have a couple of guests uh, for the Blue and Orange Army. We have uh, Pinhead. Tom Pinhead. is going to be on with uh, Tom. Tom. Sorry, I don't know why I called him Tim. Uh, we'll be on with us later on in the show. Uh, we also have a, a friend of mine uh, from Twitter, uh, Andy. He writes for IonIsles.com. Um, He's got some insight on the Islanders. We're going to talk a little playoffs with him. He'll, he's also going to talk a little about the Rangers as well. Okay, so perfect. He, so we'll have a nice hockey thing with him. Tom, on the other hand, will be on. We're actually going to try and get a nice little history of the BO, BOA tonight. Especially, that would be good. Since, I th- I think, uh, it's a good I, I mood since the Islanders made the playoffs. And, and we talk about the BOA. We hang out with them. We might as well get the backstory about them and see, see what Tom's got to say about the Islanders and the playoffs that start next week. Um I'm excited for tonight's show. I know Dan's excited. Uh, one more thing about the Vision 1.1. Um, I actually s- am going to be shooting them an email for our next show. Uh, so we will be having them on in the next about month. Okay, hopefully. awesome. Um, so I'm excited about that. We have a lot of other things planned. We do apologize for the lack of baseball. It is early in the season, but all it, of the it's local actually teams the are... First, yeah, this is the, like the first year in ages that... Pretty much every team other than the Devils are have a shot or in the playoffs or having a shot in the playoffs. So the Mets and Yankees obviously they're big priorities and of ours, but there's just so much to cover in such a little time with what we cover. So bear with us baseball fans that listen to our show for baseball. We'll get there in the dog days of summer when there's only them to talk about. So right now, go Islanders, go Knicks, go Nets, go Rangers and all right, go Devils. Yeah, who cares? Let me finish out strong. <laughs> I'm already get two last wins before he retires. Yeah. So how about this? Let's play a little more with the Vengeance, and we'll come back and talk to the basketball. And we are back on the S&D Podcast Show. On the Schmuck Sports Network, you're just listening to With a Vengeance by Division 1.1, and we're going to, unlike Brennan Jennings, we're going to talk smartly about basketball. <laughs> well, we're going to try <laughs> to, at least. Um, In case anybody doesn't get the reference, before he started the series against Miami, about a couple hours before, he announced that the Bucks will beat the Miami Heat in six games. Well, yeah, obviously, obviously he was just doing that because obviously, why are you going? What's the point of playing if you don't think you're going to win? But I understand that theory of it, but you don't say it to the media or, or Twitter or anything like that. Obviously, that's just him being silly. Uh, he knows that the Bucks are not going to beat them. They, it, it's been unwatchable. I Granted, I've only been able to watch the highlights. Um, I didn't really want to watch. I was watching the Nick game over game two of that. They're playing, um, they're playing Thursday night while we're recording. So I'm sure they're going to kill them, even though they're at Milwaukee. Um Pretty much with that series, uh, if Jennings and if Jennings and Monte Ellis don't put up eighty points, if they don't put up eighty points. There's no shot each. of winning each. <laughs> it's um not happening. Because LeBron could put up eighty points in his sleep. Yeah, but LeBron, the Heat didn't even have to play their A game the other night. Like they didn't, and they did end up winning by ten. Like, they're, they're still like in... they only have to play the fourth quarter legit. The the, the by, at the beginning of the fourth quarter they had it within four points the Bucks. And then the Bucks and the Heat just said, "Thank you very much, and we're just gonna take it from you." So, like we expected, you you picked the Heat in four as well, right? If I remember correctly, yeah. Okay. So um, as you can see, actually, anybody who wants to check that out, we actually posted that on our page. Uh, we did a first round bracket. We will do each round. Yeah. Uh, Make it more fun that way. Also, we don't look like idiots when we get the first round completely wrong. 
Yes. Um. All right. And the the best series so far, obviously, I'm being biased right now, is the Knicks versus the Celtics. And I was at Game One. That was definitely one of the greatest thrills of my life being at a Knicks playoff game. Uh, I've been wanting to do something like that since I was a little kid, obviously, watching the great teams of the 90s. Um, the Knicks, pretty much, the game one, there was like a good old boxing match. They were filling each other out, and they, whoever was going to take the last punch was going to win. Um, the Knicks sucked. didn't suck in the first half of game one, but they played, they played relatively okay. Melo was hot in the first half. Uh, J.R. Smith wasn't really. He made an awesome dunk that amped up the crowd. But other than that, the first half, the Celtics actually went to halftime with the lead. Then the second qu- half started, and the Knicks just put on the clamps. Uh, Jason Kidd played his old self with a bunch of steals, and the Knicks held the, the, held the Celtics to only 24 points going that whole second half. And that is amazing. You don't see that often with the Knicks, especially... Defense was uh, unheard of for the Knicks for the last for for a billion years since the early 90s. Um, that was great to see. Uh, Kenny Martin is becoming the new folk hero at the Garden, and everybody's loving his uh, finesse and defense. And then game two, the same thing happened. Uh, the Knicks started off hot in the first quarter, shut went ice cold in the second, and then they they go got hot in the third and fourth period, quarter. And they just went off on the Celtics. And now they have to go to Boston Friday night and keep it up. They have to get... I want to see how the Knicks respond when they do get punched in the mouth on the road. Um, the Celtics are going to be really amped up to go because it is, unfortunately, the first game they're home since the unfortunate uh, bombing last Monday. So it's going to be amped up, and that, the Knicks have to be there and ready to go. That's one of those things where you got to think that the emotion's going to be there, and the crowd's going to be jacked uh, up for it. I, where they, you got to go, yeah. you got to figure they're taking game three. Yeah, if 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 that's that's my point. If they do happen to win game three, I'm not going to be at the end of the world because they have to win game four, no doubt about it. But just how high they're going to be, the Knicks have to be ready to. Re- Spot, respond to that and just even that out I know that Boston deserves it right now just because they're home and everything like that but the Knicks are just the better team right now and they have to take care of business on the road that's the only way we're going to have a shot of winning the championship is by beating teams like who's been caliber playoff teams forever on the road so I'm really interested to see how the Knicks do tomorrow night and then on Sunday afternoon in Boston I think they're going to split. I'm gonna, unfortunately, they're going to lose tomorrow night and then win. find a way to win on Sunday to bring back to the Garden a 3-1 series and hopefully wrap it up, which I will be wrong with because I did project the Knicks and Celtics in seven. I hope I'm wrong. You did. I said five. Okay, hopefully you're right. I, I really hope I'm, I'm wrong, but I was being realistic on that. One of the other non-local uh, East Coast series is actually probably the most boring series. I I would have to say Heat Heat and uh, Bucks. You wouldn't say Pacers Hawks. You're not. Yeah, you're, that's, you're, that's. I actually that's, haven't heard one thing about that series, so I guess you're right. Paul George is playing. Yeah, that's the only thing I. Congrats to him as the most improved player in the league. And the J.R. Smith for six man, man of the year. the year. So, um, that's but, yeah. been good. The, it's just been the Pacers been. Uh, it's two nothing in that series, right? Yes. Okay, so the Pacers have just been clamping them down and. Finding ways to win. Though. And you can go to the game in Atlanta for $16. Wow, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. My meal was $16 <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's that for that series. The, the, the Pacers are just a better team, and they're going to win in five, like I projected. Um, you had them in five? I had them even a sweeter, sweeper of five. I think five. I we both had them in five. five. Yeah, we gave them one win in Atlanta. Uh and then the the most Jekyll and Hyde series in the Eastern Conference so far is the Nets and uh, Bulls. The first game, I unfortunately didn't wasn't able to really enjoy and sit down and watch the game. I was able to watch this game too. Um, game one, they absolutely blitzkrieged the Bulls, and that was just impressive to see. When I was able to go on a Sports Center app, and it was already their Nets were winning by twenty points. So I was like, "What the hell happened to the Bulls? They just got completely blitzkrieged in the." Uh, 
the first game. And then the second game, they responded like the Bulls, that everybody expected the Bulls to play in the first game. So tonight, that well, we're recording on a Wednesday night, a uh, Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday, buddy. It's the, the 25th. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, these, uh, would, depending on the weeks, are getting to me. I'm sorry. We're recording Thursday, so the Nets are playing Bulls tonight at 8.30. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how the Bulls answer the bell on the road and play in a host- hostile territory as Chicago. Um, I still think that series is going to go six or seven. Um, it's either either teams, especially on the way they're playing, and apparently Derrick Rose isn't coming back anytime soon, which is sad to see. He's playing video games with Kobe. <laughs> so with that, with that being said, it's anybody's game. The, the Nets need Joe Johnson to stay healthy. I know he has plantar fasciitis right now. He's game time and, decision for but the he'll, he'll probably play. For game three. He probably will play, and they need Darren Williams and Brooke Lopez and that crew to keep playing tough D against them. I'll tell you what about that series. You gave the Nets a lot more credit than I did. <laughs> you did? I said six. What I say? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The, the, the I, Nets deserve it. They I, played I, well this year. I think Tom Tibio is one of the best coaches in the league. Yeah. No, absolutely. absolutely. And he, he ripped it to them. He ripped it to them on... Uh, he absolutely ripped it to him uh, at one of the timeouts on Game One, and it, it, you never saw, you never see that really out of Thibodeau, because their team normally plays every night, balls out. So it was one of those rare things that Brooklyn got amped up, because they it was their first quote unquote uh, ga- playoff game in Brooklyn. They had a blackout and everything else, so the crowd was feeding off of that. So the Nets played really well. Um. Another thing with the Bulls is that it's just so impressive that entire team that Noah's basically hasn't played. Yeah, no, Noah hasn't played all year. He's had plantar fasciitis. Yeah. Um, Rose hasn't played all year. It's been about one year since Rose's injury. Yeah. Yeah, it has exactly been one year. So, um, it's all about their team defense, and there have been they are a good team other than Derrick Rose because. They're, they grew up together, and they were they had a lot of good picks throughout the years. They they are actually one of the few teams that draft well in the NBA. So um, the net uh, the Nets have to the Nets have to take care of their business on the road and hope to hope to uh, split because tonight in Chicago is going to be crazy. You, you got to split in Chicago, or you're not going to, or you're losing this game, this series in five. Uh, yeah, I, I, if exactly. you go home down. You might be able to get the emotional boost of winning it, but yeah. you're not going to have any chance of winning the series. Yeah, pretty much. So the Nets have to, have to, have to be able to take a punch if they do happen to lose one of these two games in Chicago. Okay. Uh, the West Green Conference has been fun. Um, uh, let's see. Which, which uh, series you want to go first? Might as well start with the Lakers. Uh, Kobe Bryant's having his say in the series. <laughs> He's having a lot of say. Um which is the insert. He did inter- not tweet for game two, though. Yeah, he didn't tweet. Um, unfortunately, they're down t- 2-0 against the Spurs, and the Spurs are just the better team, and they're a team, so they're they're gonna win easily. I said five, and Steve, what did you say? I actually said the Lakers were gonna win that oh, series. Oh well, <laughs> I lose. thought. Uh, I said seven Lakers and seven. Yeah. So I still have a chance. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the Spurs have just got to keep up on what they're doing. The Lakers are not what the Lakers of old, and they don't have Kobe, so good night. Uh, Dwight's actually played better. No, of course he's played better. It's the whole when Melo and uh, Stat were on the team the first year of them being injured. Uh, one team, whatever, one guy was not on the court, the other guy played well. Right. Um, the other series... Which is interesting to be one and one that I want to talk about is the Denver Golden State. That's actually been a great series. Yeah. Um I did not Steph, expect one and one. I'm not. I I did. I said. I think. St- what? Once Lee w- once Lee went down, I said the Warriors. But they still have Stephen Curry, and Stephen Curry, even with the ankle injury, can in outscore two, your entire. Team. He he went off, and when he goes, when a guy like Steph Curry goes off, your team's gonna win nine out of ten times because he just was unstoppable. And unflappable, because he, he did it, mess up his ankle, but he still found a way and played as a warrior. And found, uh, no pun intended, I just realized what I did. Uh, played as a warrior. Um, 
and he was able to finish what he he was able to do, and that was very impressive, and he carried the Warriors on their back. Unfortunately, in the long run, the Nuggets are going to take care of business because David Lee is an all-star, and he, he there's going to be just too much for Stephon Curry to handle. So that's going to be an interesting series on how that works out, but don't count out Stephon, Stephon Curry. He's uh, one of the best players in the league. He's one of the underrated players in the league. And as long as he's hot, the Golden State Warriors have a sh- fighting shot in this series. What do you think of it, though? Like I said, I don't think uh, with, with Lee out, I think that hurts them a lot. Um, I'm excited to see what happens in that series. I believe I had... A, I had... 4-2 Denver. Okay. And you I, had 4-3 Denver. Okay. I, I had it in seven. So, pretty much um, pretty much the same thing. So, I, I think they're a little bit better. Um, but that was before David Lee got hurt. So, who knows what's exactly going to happen. Hopefully, Stephen Curry plays just as well as he did game two. Um, the other Los Angeles playoff series is the Clippers and the Grizzlies which a lot of people thought would be a lot tighter. But as of right this moment... The, the Clippers have a 2-0, 2-0 series lead. Uh, it's probably pretty much the home court advantage kind of thing. Um, that's going to be a home court series, I think, yeah. and it's going to go 7. I think that's what I put. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be a 7. Cause you had it at 6. Yeah, actually, I, I'm going to keep it at 6. I'm, I'm I have it at 7. I think it's going to stay at 6. Um, It was just one of those... Home court find a way to uh, find a way to win kind of games. They're both competitive, great games um, from the highlights. Use the crowd. Yeah, kind of thing. So the Grizzlies are going to really be amped up being at home, and they have the way tools to find a way to win with their defense and their defensive uh, player of the year, Marcus Saul. Uh, so congrats on him on that. Did he win that today? Yes. Uh, yesterday. Who did we have? Uh, we also put our awards up, by the way. Uh, you might have had them. I had no. I had I, Larry Sanders. Oh, I had I had uh, Hibbert. <laughs> we were so East Coast biased. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, anyway, <laughs> the um, only West Coast guy we both had was Dimmy and Lillard from Portland. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, well, we're an East Coast show, so <laughs> we had to be fair. Um, all right. With that series, we know it's it's going to be a long four series because that the. The Grizzlies are not going to go away without a fight, especially at home. And the uh, the series that was supposed to be a lot of talk, but really hasn't been so far, is the Thunder Rockets series. Um, Thunder have taken care of business. Um, game two, unfortunately, James Harden missed two free throws that could have brought the game close or in distance of them taking the lead. The the Rockets did something interesting in game two. They put in a guy, uh, Beverly. They went with they went in small lineup. Um, and they put in a guy named Beverly, and he went one on one with Westbrook. Yeah. And he released the beast out of Westbrook, <laughs> like an idiot. Yeah. Because he made Westbrook so angry that he went off. Yeah, and also, unfortunately, Jeremy Lin got hurt last night. Um, it's just another way of thank God the Knicks didn't sign him to that you know, big deal that uh, everybody was mad at at first. Um, Raymond Felton again has Raymond's had a first good first two games. He's been driving to the hole. Um, unfortunately, Paul Pierce was on him on defense, the defensive side of the ball, and he was really outmanned until the Knicks finally changed it up. Um. So, with that series, I think it's pretty much a wrap. Unfortunately, James Harden is their only real scare against the Thunder, but everybody know the Thunder knows how James Harden plays because they played it with them the last bunch of years. So, the, the Thunder have it under wraps, and I'm going to be wrong because I said five, but it's going to be a sweep. Did you? Yeah. Uh, you said, we both said five. So, it's going to end up being a sweep. Alrighty. Um... The NBA playoffs are in full swing. Unfortunately, they are like the uh, yeah the you NCAA. Can't get, you can't get a groove. Like I was so amped up Tuesday night after the Knicks won the game two, and I'm like, all right, 
let's go. I'm like, oh, great. We got to wait till Friday night. Um, so the Knicks, at least this weekend, it's a one day off, which is great. Thank God. But there's really no reason why it should be Tuesday to Friday. So um, that sucks. It doesn't That's take always, that long to travel. It, that and it's NBA. It's not like a contact, contact, contact sport. Um, but anyway, um, go Knicks. Um, let's see what the Nets do. I, I, as long as they're both able to split on the road, it's going to be good. You know how I see that series? Which series? The Nets Bulls series. It's the series of which team wants to lose to Miami more. Yeah, because pretty the much. winner of it goes to play Miami in the next round. Essentially, yeah. But you know what? There will be no series better than I think than the Bulls versus the Heat. That would be a good series. Um, but and I think that if they get to Game Five up. 3-1 against the Nets, that you might see Derrick Rose play just to get playing time so he can play in that series against Miami. That would be nice to just see. As a, just think about the confidence boost Chicago yeah, would get. Playing well and then getting Derrick Rose back. That would be something. Um, that really would be something. <laughs> that um, would be an amazing series. Absolutely. Which would be good for the Knicks because uh, they should be able to beat the Pacers. Yeah, <laughs> they should. And then if Miami's beaten up, so... So the Knicks got to play good on Friday and Sunday, and the Nets have to play well tonight, and I'm guessing they're playing Saturday if things are looking... I don't have this. Mathematically, that sounds about right. The only thing I have for you right now is Milwaukee 30, Miami 21, 12 minutes left in the second quarter. Oh, well, maybe our... Here we go. (laughs) No, the the Heat are just deploying them. They're letting them have a first half lead for the crowd. Yeah. Well, let's play a little more Division 1.1, and we're going to come right back with my buddy Andy from Eye on the Isles. S&D Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Basketball Association or any of its affiliates. Welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Uh, Steve and Dan are here. Uh, once again, that was Division 1.1 with, with a Vengeance. Uh, we actually have a special guest with us today. Please welcome from IonTheIsle.com, uh, Andy. Welcome, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Uh, why don't you give us a little background on uh, yourself and the Eye on the Isle website for the, viewer, for the listeners who don't know about it? Absolutely. Um I've been an Islander fan for 35 years, um, currently writing for a, I'm the editor for a website called www.eyesonisles.com. We're part of the fan side at Sports Network, and we provide everything that fans need to know on the team. Um, we have a daily piece called Top Shelf that comes out every morning that kind of recaps the previous day's events in the NHL and around the island, and then we post pre- and post-game reports uh, before and after every Islanders game. Um, pretty much everything you need to know about the Islanders you can get right on our website at eyesonisles.com. All right, awesome. Might as well start it off. Uh, this week's been a huge week for the Islanders, uh, embarking that this is the first time in seven years that the Islanders are actually making the playoffs and have a shot of being higher than a eight seed. So take like how how's the feedback coming back from the blog of all the Islander fans and how awesome this week has been? that the Islander fan is finally back and yelling and chanting and everything. If they're finally being loud again. I think you know, Islander fans have, have really um, stayed on, stayed on the wagon, so to speak. Um, there was a lot of times over the last 10 or 15 years where they could have easily jumped off. And I'm not, I don't think anybody would have blamed them. Yeah. But me. <laughs> it's a fan base that at the end of the day really does stick together and I think sometimes our excitement over what's gone on the last couple of months with this club is often confused for cockiness. And me being my age, which I won't discuss here, um, I went through the Stanley Cup years, and I can tell you this is not a fan base that is cocky. Um, at this point, after so many years of irrelevance, I think that the team as well as the fans deserve to be excited, and they should be about this club. Okay. Um Speaking of going into playoffs, they will be starting on the 30th, the NHL playoffs. The schedule has not been released yet. Um, in your opinion, who, 
fits the best matchup that the Islanders could possibly get out of the first round against? That's a great question. Um, the Maple Leafs are up 3 nothing tonight. Their magic number coming in was 3 to clinching the 5 seed. So it's looking more and more unlikely that the Isles will be able to overtake them and get 5. Um, I have them finishing 6 personally. They could, if things break the wrong way, absolutely finish 7 or 8. Um, I'm one of the rare people that does not think that that's scary, and that's not taking anything away from the Penguins. Um, I think that the most scary matchup for the Isles right now is Boston. It's a team that, with their size, to go along with their skill, presents a huge number of challenges for the Isles. I think Chara will effectively eliminate Tavares in a series of that length. And I think right now we're looking at a series with Washington as possibly being one of the most exciting series of the entire first round, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm definitely with you with the uh, with Capitals. They're a little bit more. They're not as physical as a team, so the Islanders could definitely handle their own. Opposed to the Bruins, their Bruins are just bigger and nastier, and unfortunately, yep. they're going to carry the whole Boston. Grand, they they were already going to do it with carrying Boston, but even more so, they're going to be more dedicated on bringing a championship to Boston. Uh, they're just going to they're just going to try to buzz saw through everybody in that that conference since no one's really that tough quote unquote tough um right. it's it's it has that feeling of a 2001 2002 islander team this team's actually better uh, with the yashins and the pekkas that we might be facing the the leafs again that makes it a lot it is pretty funny that the islanders and leafs are going to be playing with each other again um we know how nasty and awesome that series was um would you like to see that matchup again since you've been a fan for that long? And that's probably the best team I've seen. I've been a I, Islander fan since 96, so I've been a curse. So I'm sorry for your uh, for the awfulness. <laughs> we don't, you know what? We don't hold anything against you, pal. <laughs> um, I, I'll go back to that Toronto series as being probably, I'll, I'll say two things. I'll say it was, honestly, and I've been watching hockey I've been playing, coaching, watching hockey for over 35 years. I, that series was nasty. It was one of the nastiest series that I remember seeing. Um, and also what I think the younger Islander fan is going to be really surprised at this year is the way the, the old barn on Hempstead is going to be really rocking. I don't think the younger fan realizes how loud that place can be. And if you want a little sample of that, you can go on YouTube and look up the Sean Bates penalty shot. Absolutely. I remember that. Curtis Joseph. Yeah. That, that was my that best Islander moment. The roof just exploded. And in, in fact, if I could just uh, give a little plug for a quick second, that video is actually up on our website, eyesonisles.com. If you go under the Old Barn on Hempstead link, um, that video is actually posted there. And turn up your speakers and shut the door and just – it literally blew the roof off the ceiling when he scored that goal. And that's what it's going to be like when we start the playoffs next week. Okay. But it'd be a good series. Um, I'm not. I'm one of the few that's not sold on Toronto this year. Not a big fan of James Reimer. Um, unsure how he's going to perform on a big stage. Um, I'm not. I'm not afraid of Montreal either, especially the way they're playing lately. Carey Price looks like he's suffering from a huge drop in confidence. The Canadians' defense outside of PK Subban look very tired. Um, I think that could be a, a series that's very winnable for the Islanders as well. The, the one thing I have a problem with, with playing Montreal is the fact that it would be the Habs in the postseason, and I just think that it would be that arena alone can spook you. Those, okay. especially those older arenas. Yep. And the history behind a lot of the teams, like the original six teams, right, can definitely spook a young team like the Islanders, especially seeing it as it is their first hockey uh, NHL postseason experience. Um, we are here with Andy from Eye on the Isles on the S and D podcast show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Um, speaking of the Young Islanders, seeing how it is their first playoffs, we're going to basically put out with John to talk about the John Tavares. Um, do you think it would be like when Crosby had his first one, where he's just going to be like he's going to basically take it all in, try his best, but take it all in for the first time, and then work for better for next year? If you really analyze who John Tavares is, um, John Tavares 
if we we've seen his career ascension over the over the over the years he's been with the Islanders since he debuted as a rookie and nobody works harder in the off season than he does to get better nobody is more is less satisfied with where he is than John right now I think and that push to get better I think means that he's never going to give he's never going to be there in other words just for the experience um I think this is a guy who the first half of this season carried us on his back when we were 8 11 and 1 at the end of February and everybody was questioning the direction the team was going the head coaching skills of Jack Capuano came into question <laughs> Everyone forgets that we wouldn't have even been eight, eleven, and one if it wasn't for John Tavares. And again, just knowing him, I, I just I can't see that. I think if once he gets into the postseason, he's going to rise up to the occasion, and it's only going to make him a better hockey player down the road. I feel that come next season, he's easily in the top ten, could even be in the top five of players in the entire league. I, I think he's already in the top ten, to be honest with you. Um, like. But with like with the the I'm not worried about Tavares. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's the rest of the team that's gonna be. Um, hopefully they don't have the deer in headlights look. Yep. Um, that's that's what I'm worried about. The rest of the team being like that because we all know Tavares has been there and juniors and everything like that. It's it's gonna be interesting to see how the, the whole team team as a whole be ready to go. I know the ba- it's great having the Bokoff being the goalie. He's been there before. He's he's a veteran, like we all know. Obviously, it's going to be pretty much solely on the Bokoff and see how far he can carry the Islanders and get those timely goals and the tough defense that the Islanders are actually not used to used to since the playoffs is a completely di- different animal. Um, uh, let's see what uh, who is your other than Tavares? Because obviously we're all going to say jo- John Tavares as their MVP. That just just silly. Um, who is your second MVP this year for the Islanders? If you, know you had what? to give one. Yep, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I know people are going to say, you know, the easy answer to that is Nabokov, but I don't put the Islanders' defensive resurgence just on Nabokov alone. Um, when you look at this team, in their last 11 games, they've allowed 21 goals, and that's a team effort. That's Absolutely. not a Nabokov effort. Yes, he's been spectacular at times, but... I mean, that's been Andrew McDonald, the second in the league in block shots. Um, Thomas Hickey's been waiver wire gold as Garth Snow just reaches into that bag and pulls out another gem. Um, yeah, it is a waiver wire goal. Right. I mean, for, for me, honestly, it's been the play of, over the last three weeks of that second line, specifically Kyle Poso, for me. Uh, he is finally, the goals aren't there. People are going to say, well, he's got four goals. The goals aren't there, but if you look, that guy never takes a shift off. He, I think, has finally discovered who he is. When he first got drafted, we were all like, here's our next 25, 30 goal power winger. It's not what he is. He's a 15 to 20 goal power winger who consistently outworks the other team's defense on the forecheck and creates opportunities for everybody else. Um, And I think the resurgence of that line has been critical critical to this run that the Islanders have been on, and he deserves a lot of the credit for it. And also, don't forget Josh Bailey. Uh, he's also stepping up in his uh, age. That whole that second line, well, like me and Steve have been preaching the last two months, is we need to get that second line going. We need to get that second line going. And it just out of nowhere, the last few weeks, that second line has finally stepped up. Right. So has the Islanders. And it's so awesome to see top 10 draft picks finally coming through in the clutch for the Islanders, not just John Tavares. So it's really great to see um, that whole second line. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see them as well. Uh, they're both highly touted draft picks, granted that they weren't as nowhere near as John Tavares, obviously. So I'm excited. This year is just a building on year. Whatever, whatever the Islanders do in the playoffs is house money. What do you think next year with Ryan Strom and the possibility of Nino Nina Ryder and uh, Brock, Nelson. Brock Nelson and Andres Lee and those guys finally having a shot to come up? What do you think the sky? Do you think the sky is the limit for the Islanders coming up in the future when they do move to Brooklyn? Absolutely, I think the point you just made was was what I was on. You just made an outstanding point, and that is right back to my original tie-in of expectations. Um, 
whatever the Islanders do in the postseason this season, that they could go into the first round, and I, don't, I personally don't think it's going to happen. They could go into the first round and get swept. This season is still a, an absolute monster of a success for this club. It's put them back on the map where major sport networks are now leading into their stories on hockey with the Islanders. Um, you can see it in a lot of the trepidation that's being that's coming out from Ranger fans that they're they're not really all that much comfortable with this newfound uh, kind of little brother now growing up and taking some of the hockey spotlight in New York away from them. Um, and this is just the icing on the cake, as you said. Ryan Strom will make the club in October at a training camp. Nito Niederreiter will make the club at a training camp. You're probably more than likely going to see, which is a guy you, that he's left out, Matt Donovan. Yes. Who actually had a monster season in the American Hockey League at Bridgeport this year. Um, actually tied for the defenseman lead. I'm not sure if he won that goal-scoring defenseman lead, but he, he was actually definitely tied for it on the last day of the season. Um, this team is going to be a really, really good hockey club for a lot of years to come, and they're going to be the lead story in New York going forward, unfortunately, for the Rangers and their fans. Well, speaking of Rangers, we are going to talk a little bit of the rest of the league. Um, I believe the Rangers are actually tied right now tonight on the 25th against Carolina. The last time I checked, they were tied at 2-2. Two to two. Um, I know they're a one, one and in team at this point. All they right. need to do is win one game and they're in. They have two, uh, one period left and I believe one more game after that. Yep. Um, if they do make the playoffs, do you think they're gonna make? They can make a run. I think so. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for I. Uh, what What do you think? I definitely <laughs> think so. We can make an argument. Here's you know he, he, here's my opinion on the Rangers and uh, I. This is gonna sound absolutely off the wall, but my wife and son are actually diehard Ranger fans. Good. So you can imagine what game day is like when the two teams play each other I, is I, like in my house. It's two separate rooms. Doors shut, nothing being said. Um, but you know what? They're part of that Ranger half, I say, that is respectful um, and and cognizant of the fact that they're not the only team in the NHL. Now, right now, they are still tied 2-2. The third just started. Winnipeg is up one nothing at the end of the first at home against Montreal. I, I still think the Rangers. I cannot see the Rangers not picking up a win either tonight in Carolina or Saturday against New Jersey. If they back in, they back in. I don't think that's a safe way to go in, but it's a microcosm of the Rangers' whole season, right? It's been marked by inconsistency. John Tortorella, we've all seen how he is with the press. Can you imagine how he is in the locker room? You know, that Mike Keenan-esque style of coaching worked in 1994 for the Rangers when you had guys of strong will and character. Mark Messier, who I think maybe not even arguably, is the greatest captain in the history of sports. Um, Adam Graves, Mike Richter, Brian Leach. When Keenan would push on them really hard, they would respond because that was the kind of character they had. The type of character a player today is not necessarily like that anymore. And I don't think Tortorella has evolved in that way. You can see how poorly he develops young players. Um, Chris Kreider and JT Miller should have been given way more of a look this year than they have. He ran Marion Gaverick who had two of, of his last three seasons of, for the Rangers were outstanding. I mean, 40 goal seasons. Right. A team that's struggling to score. And he would just berate him in the press. He benched him until he literally ran him out of town, where Gabrick was so relieved to go to Columbus and, and get that fresh start. Um, so the Ranger problems, I believe, start with Tortorella. They extend to the inconsistencies on the ice. Um the Mark Stahl injury hurt them huge, especially with Michael Delzato not playing his best hockey. But at the end of the day, Henrik Lundqvist gives them a chance to win every single night. That's where I was going to go, and he's starting to get hot. Every single he's, – he's, he's arguably the best goalie in the Eastern Conference. He's, and, go on, I'm sorry. Um, you know, when you have him and when you have an extreme talent in Rick Nash and – one of my favorite players, and I'm going to say this as a diehard Islander fan, Ryan Callahan. Um, oh, yes, we talk about him all the time. Yeah. He's my, I'm getting a Team USA Callahan. <laughs> there, there, you know what? I don't think anybody is going to want to play the Islanders or the Rangers if, the, if and when the Rangers do get in, and I still believe they do. I think the five to eight seeds in the East are going to be very, very tough outs this year. I really do. 
Uh, I I agree with the, everything you said about the Rangers. Uh, the I think if like I told my girlfriend, my girlfriend is a big Ranger fan. Um, as, like your wife, um, she's one of those fans as well. And after the Islander Ranger game, I go at the one that, that we lost one nothing. I go if the Rangers get hot, they're gonna be a tough out, especially if they crawl. They're gonna be what like the Kings were last year. Yep. Um, they're finally getting that. They're finally get that going. Uh, goal scoring with Nash, obviously that's been all year long. Uh, Pro, not Prost, I'm sorry. Stefan is getting his goals. They're just they're 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 on a mission now that they're finally get it going, and the sky's the limit for those Rangers if they stay hot. One problem I have with the Rangers is they're inconsistent. Not, it's not just the inconsistency. It's if the secondary scoring falls off, it's just like the Islanders from the first half of the year. All, it's, all, it's all Rick Nash. Agreed with that. So if the secondary scoring is not there in the postseason, granted Richards is getting hot very, very, right now, um, but if they don't stay hot, that secondary scoring, and they don't get it in the postseason, my other biggest question is Rick Nash has never really played in the postseason. Right, you don't know how he's going to react. Exactly. How is he going to react? react not only just to the postseason, but New York Ranger postseason. It's yes. a lot different than when he made it with Columbus. Absolutely. Media scrutiny is going to be all over him to produce. And, you know, again, second scoring with the Rangers has been a problem all season. I mean, just two weeks ago, they were last in the league in goals per game. All of a sudden, they have this explosion, and everyone's like, wow, they've went from last in the league to 17th in the league. They're starting to score goals. I question, though, in that explosion that the Rangers had, specifically over that two-game stretch when they beat Florida and then came back and just absolutely pounded Buffalo, were the Rangers really at that point playing that well, or was that just a mirage that was masked by the absolutely horrid defensive efforts of the Panthers and the Sabres? I would say it's probably B, unfortunately. Right. Um, well, like we were saying with the unclutch, is another advantage I was telling my friend last week about not having Gabrick is in the postseason. You won't miss him anyway because he didn't play last year in the postseason. Right. <laughs> um, who do you think right now, if the season, if there were no games tonight, right, the the sixteen are set. Who's gonna? What, what's the finals and who wins the cup? All right. Um, I know I threw a co- uh, trick one at you. No, it's all right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go with the easy with the easy one right here. And You're not gonna say as, you know what? As as hockey writers, we have to be objective, and at the same time, there are, we have to go out on a limb. So, it, you know, it's real simple for me to say, oh, it's going to be Pittsburgh and Chicago. All right. How about this? We'll give you a realistic one and a fan one. <laughs> Make it my, fun. my well. I'll, you know what? I'll give you my fan one first. How about this? Back in 1980, when the Islanders won their first Stanley Cup, if you remember that year. The Philadelphia Flyers were the were as close to the Chicago Blackhawks of this year as you can get. They were actually had a fantastic regular season. They were forecasted to run through the postseason all the way to the Cup. Funny thing happens, the Islanders show up, totally play on four levels above their head and win their first Stanley Cup. So, you know, just in in the last five years, right? The Anaheim Ducks go even further back. The Dallas Stars. Um, the New Jersey Devils, teams that, that 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 you wouldn't even at the beginning of the playoffs think had a shot at the cup, ended up winning it all. So my fantasy pick would be the Islanders and the Blues. Ooh, I still ooh. think the Blues are a very very deep club and very dangerous in the playoffs. This is, yeah, this is the fan pick, everybody. For the right, for the right. Don't don't put this. In. When they don't play each other, don't some hate mail and some uh, I'll have some uh, things thrown on my lawn, but. <laughs> That's my fantasy pick. My realistic pick, um, honestly, you know what? This could be the year that Vancouver finally breaks that playoff just doldrum that they seem to be in every year. You know, they race into the playoffs and they just fall on their face, sort of like the San Jose Sharks of the West. Um, I, I can honestly see this being Vancouver's year. Corey Schneider has been absolutely outstanding. I think at some point they're going to eventually get Ryan Kessler back, which is going to make them deeper down the middle. Um, I think that's a team that can really run the table in the West and go all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. In the East, which I happen to think is a little more wide open, um, I'm still I still like the Bruins. You know, I still think that that's a team that's built for the playoffs. Um, 
It's a team that really rolls four lines deep. And let's face it, I mean, they're in second place in the conference. I think they're going to win out the division against Montreal to lock up that two seed. And that's been with an inconsistent Tyler Sagan, Patrice Bergeron being on the shelf with a concussion. He's now back. I think, you know, Rask has come in and showed that he's a true number one goaltender. So I'm going to go with Vancouver in the West and Boston in the East. Okay. Okay. Um, well, Andy, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, My pleasure, uh, check out his uh, his writing on Eye, Eye on Isle or, I, or I, Eye on Isles. Eyes, eyes. Eyes. Eyes on Isle. E-Y-E-S-O-N-I-S-L-E-S. Eyesonisles.com. I've actually been reading a, a few articles since we... Uh, Actually, we asked him to be on the show. A lot of good writing. So if no one has checked it out yet, definitely take a look at it. It's pretty. It's very good if you're a big Islander fan like ourselves. So we're, you definitely got a few new readers. So keep up the great work. And yes, and thank you once again for joining us. Thanks for having me on. S and D podcast is no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Hockey League or any of its affiliates. <laughs> And welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Once again, that was Division 1.1 with, with a Vengeance. We are now here with another guest of ours. Uh, most of you know him as Pinhead, but some, most of you also know him as Tom from 329. Welcome to the show, Tom. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? So when you guys called me, I just figured out what the S&D in the S&D Podcast means because <laughs> it came up as Steve and Dan. I'm like, oh, my God, that's brilliant. There you go. <laughs> It only took me, like, forever to figure that one out. <laughs> well, don't worry. Some people thought we would, should change it to SMD, but that's a different story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> so that's we won't go into that one. Family that escalated quickly. Uh, we are not an explicit show, so we <laughs> cannot explain that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, well, oh, so I should probably censor myself then, huh? <laughs> just a little. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so why don't you? Uh, we've had your buddy Matt on recently, a couple times. Who's and also Kayla's been on as well, his girlfriend. Um, so why don't you? <laughs> you, should, you should be like, hey Kayla, Joe Thornton's terrible, and then you feel like it's really sad. Yeah, we kind of did. We did. Um, <laughs> anywho, um, if Kayla, if you're listening, Joe Thornton sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Great. Now we're going to get yelled at. <laughs> anyway. It really doesn't matter. Um, so why don't you give us a little history since they couldn't really get how How the Blue and Orange Army got started. All right. So before I even started sitting up there, when I used to sit in Loudville and get the Loudville seats in like the bottom of that, um, my friends West Fall and Silent Phil always sat all the way upstairs in 329 where we sat in the lower part of 330 and they always started the chants. We always went with them. And then eventually, you know, we started chanting at each other, you know, like, Westfall, yeah! Because, you know, that's how we knew him from his Westfall jersey because we didn't know his name at the time. So that's how that his nickname kind of stuck with us. But then eventually, um, you know, they were having a lot more fun than everyone around us. They didn't want to, you know, start chants, so we started just getting tickets and moving up there. And then soon, um, more people joined us. And, like, we had... Like it was a good like five ten of us, and that's how we're like, hey, you know, we like I started getting into soccer, and then they all were into soccer. So like, yo, let's let's sing some soccer songs and have a good time up here. So we started doing that, and then more people started coming, and then more people started coming and liking the stuff and liking our page and you know loving what we do. And uh, here we are today with uh, I think we have like close to three hundred and sixty likes on Facebook and stupid crap like that. And since we started in like two thousand and nine, which really isn't that bad because we only started the Facebook of like. Maybe a year ago. It's pretty cool. That is pretty yeah. awesome. Um, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm not as hardcore of an Islander fan as I used to be, like Tom or Steve. At first, I'll be like, all right, these guys, I give you guys so much credit for sticking with the team through thick and thin. A lot more than I have. Um, it's a really amazing. I never really got a chance to sit with you guys until this year when you guys invited me and Steve up. And... Sitting with you guys one game, you guys definitely rejuvenated my fandom as being an Islander fan. So, thank you guys for that. Um, it really has been rough, obviously, as you know, since you've been there since day one of this awful transformation. Uh, <laughs> um, 
kudos uh, to that and the rest of your army. Uh, thanks again, though, for getting me back into liking the Islanders like I did as a kid. So no kudos. problem. That's that's like the best thing to hear is like when like like you're telling like oh you got me back into it or like you have the people it's like their first game you know like they're bringing their kids to their first game or whatever and they end up sitting by us and they just like love what we do and then after the game people will come up to like me or Will or Westfall and just be like you know you guys made the game so much fun thank you keep doing what you're doing and then you always get the haters who are like oh those kids suck it's like all right have fun in high school tomorrow when you know you don't know what you're doing and so. Like, like for every one guy who, like, talks crap about us, we have, like, four or five people at games. So, like, we love what you do. And recently, since the team has been getting better and, you know, we've been growing and getting louder and louder with more people, more people have started coming out to us. Like, you guys make the game awesome. You know, we don't sit over, like, our season tickets are, like, wherever. And, you know, we still sing some of your songs for, like, closet fans of you guys because, you know, we have our seats. We don't really want to move them because we like where we are. I'm like, that's just awesome to hear that people like what we're doing and support us. That's, the, like, that's like, one of the coolest things in the world. And and you guys are the legit fans because you guys been there through the years after the year before Tavares and all those years before it. Yeah, I was gonna say I've I've been there a lot longer. Than no no no, no well, well, that. that's, that's where I'm. Well, getting well, well let's yeah, add, yeah. let's add on to that. Why don't you give us a little uh, Tom Islander history? Yeah, all right. So, uh, like three days after I was born or something like that, my dad went to an Islander game and. Uh, brought me a stick, which is currently chilling on the wall in my room. It's like a mini stick. But, and since then, well, pretty much since day one, it was decided I was going to be an Islander fan. And, you know, I just fell in love with the game because my whole family played hockey. And, you know, the Islanders were my team at the time. And that's how I stuck with them. Um, what the hell was my first game ever? It was a while ago. <laughs> I, um, I remember this, my first game. I know it was versus the Devils, and we lost. But then the second game I went to, I saw us beat Lemieux and the Penguins, which was awesome. I'm pretty sure my boy uh, Pierre Turgeon, my first favorite Islander player ever, scored a goal in that game. That was my first favorite <laughs> player as well. Yeah, that means I'm in the last of becoming an Islander fan. Um, my first game, I will never forget it, was opening night of 1996 when we whipped out the Fishman Fisherman logo. Oh. <laughs> so oh. if Poor I am probably soul. I am probably the reason why the Islanders have sucked all these years. Um, oh, it's all your damn fault, Steve. <laughs> kill him. Do something about that. Pretty much. We'll go line you up with Mike Milberry. Yeah, I um, <laughs> So I've been bad luck forever. Um, see, like that's why I'm like this sucks. Like I've never, other than the Sean Bates penalty shot, I have never seen anything awesome in my life. I've always yeah. stuck with the Islanders, but it's just like the redhead stepchild. I'm like, eh. Of all my other teams, I'm like, even the Mets are better than the Islanders right now as being a Mets fan. And I'm like, they suck. You know, like that's what's um, that's what's been difficult. And the Islanders finally gelling and making the playoffs this year and maybe making noise. You never know. Um, is really rejuvenating, especially for me. Um, uh, with that, they did. Like we said, and we've been saying in this whole show, uh, they've made the playoffs. Uh, Tom, what do you think is the the ceiling for the postseason this year for the team? Um, I don't know. Personally, I feel, I'd love to see us go all the way and shock the hockey world. Of course, as a fan's perspective, but yeah, but um, I think we could win a round. I think this will be the year where we break that and get that monkey off our back and actually win a playoff round, which would be really, really nice because it's been forever since I've seen that happen. <laughs> and I would absolutely like to uh, you know, keep keep playing deep into May and possibly into June. And, you know, if, if the way we've been playing the past month, you know, we've fallen off the past two games a little bit, but it happens, you know. we got to just, you know, come back, step our game up and stick to our game plan. And we can definitely take, that, take whoever we play down. Um. Okay, so... Who do you think is the best matchup to get out of the first round for the New York Islanders? Um, nobody, really. They're all, like, every team is good. Nobody's in there by accident. You don't show them, all right, you know, we'll just take him down. Look at the Kings last year. Everybody had the Kings written off, and they shocked everyone and won everything. So it, it really, anybody can beat anybody in the playoffs. Because, you know, the regular season's over. All the goals that whoever, everybody scored, whoever wins the Art Ross, that doesn't matter. Whoever, um, you know... Wins the Rocket Richard doesn't matter. Whoever wins the Heart, it really doesn't matter because it's the postseason. Everything's changed. All the numbers go back to zero. You need 16 wins, and that's what the team should be focused on. 
Absolutely. It's all pretty much all about our defense and Navalkov and our secondary scoring for us to have any shot in passing the first round uh passing the first round and actually being competitive in the first round. Let's yes. be honest. Agreed. We, we are playing really hard. Best hockey we we all have seen probably since nineteen ninety three. Uh, yeah. that um they're pretty scrape, uh scrappy and everything like that, but it really comes down to the nitty gritty of our secondary scoring and our def- young defense. Um if that goes to fruition and our and Nabokov stays as Nabokov as he's been this year, we do have a shot to shock the first round. So one one run at a time, I think we do have an outside shot of surprising people. Can it happen? Maybe. Will it realistically happen? I I don't know. Coming it, from it, the guy who's been doubting the team all year. So no, keep it, doing it. it. <laughs> exactly. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> He's so, been doubting this team all year. So it works. So I'm going to be the doubting <laughs> Thomas because it always works. Uh, that's funny because we're on with Tom. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Clever. I, no pun intended. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's see what happens. we got to be realistic. Um, it's such a cluster right now with uh, the Rangers the Leafs, and the Senators. So it's going to be crazy to just find out what the, it's good, where we're going to play the next couple of rounds. Yeah, tomorrow and Saturday are going to be crazy jockeying for, for position. Actually, so Sunday, I, Sunday as well, because the ball... Oh, well, yeah, because they, they, yeah, they added that game. Well, they moved that game, I should say. They didn't oh, add it. Okay, yeah. Uh, they had to move that game. Um, so, speaking of Novakov, what do you think the chances of actually him winning... Or at least being a finalist for the Vezina Trophy is. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think like who else would be in it. Like as a finalist, I could probably see him be like in the top three of the choosing. I don't think he'd win it, unfortunately. Um, who's been really good this year? I'm trying to think because I've been too focused instead of looking at the rest of the league like I usually do at this time of the year. This is really nice that I'd actually don't know. So you're not looking up what draft position and. Top five pick the Islanders should pick. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't even know who's like good in the draft this year. Normally, there's a guy who I'm like we need to get this guy. I don't even care. <laughs> well, Seth, the guy right now in the draft is uh, Seth Jones, American guy. Nice. Um, if you want to, if you want to do wins, Nabokov is tied with Lundqvist for second. Okay. He is. What's the other save percentage and uh, goals against look like? His goals against, he's 26 at 2.54. Yeah, that's not Vesna quality to me. Like, he's definitely helped the team a lot, but, like, I'd say he has to be in the top five for Vesna quality, not 26. And then the save percentage, he's second to last. Yeah, no. Um, But you think he can end up in? I, th- I think he could be, like, considered, but he, like, with those numbers, I don't think he should win it. No offense to Nabokov, because he's been playing great down the stretch, making huge saves when he has to and doing everything that he has to do. Okay. Um, then, uh, also with the awards, Tavares and MVP. Yeah, I think he should get it. We clinched. He's been the backbone of this team. Without him, we are nothing. And everyone's still talking about Sidney Crosby. He's a great player. But he's been hurt for like half the goddamn season. I mean, seriously, you can't you can't really have a guy who's been hurt for most of the season. Sure, his numbers are insane, but look at who he's playing with. That team is stacked out of its mind. If you look at Tavares' numbers, he's really he's playing with boys and Molson, who are great players, but they're not, you know, top, you know, guys of the league that like the whole Penguins organization from top to bottom has on that team. Right. Well, when you look at Tavares' numbers, he's uh was he third in, third in goals right now, right? And he's like in the top ten in points, I think. He is actually tenth in points. Tied for tenth in points. And as for goals, he is third. Was he at now 28? Which is surprising. I, I don't think he got to 30 last... Did he get... He hit 30 last year? Yeah. yeah, he hit 30 last year. He like just, just think if we were playing another, what, what did we play, 48 game? Yeah, think so about it. 82 another. minus 48, I can't do math. Bigger. Yeah, so like, let's say another 30, 34 games. Another 34 games, he easily has 40 goals, I feel. He he can arguably have 50. You really want to push him. I mean, 
Yeah, right. Yeah, we actually had uh, Rob Carlin on with us a couple of weeks ago. Who? That's awesome. Who we joked about uh, about when he was here. What he would if we told him down yeah, the line that Matt Molson would actually be like either leading the team or top two on the team in assists, if he ever thought that would be possible, and he actually said no. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> he laughed at us. Yeah, right. So, what is your take on this uh, this new look, Matt Molson? Um, dude, I love it, man. He's getting his pass game in. He just um, he's the scoring touch has fallen off a little bit. I hope um, I'm sure he'll work on it for the playoffs and get going. Because once he once he gets one or two, you know, goals, I think he'll be on a roll. As can said with anybody on the team. Like when, once they you know have have that good game, they get that pass, they get the monkey off their back and score like a, you know even get a garbage goal that that lifts you. Like I've had that happen to me in games before. I'm just playing horrible, and then I get like a nice little you know redirect in front of me and it just lands on my stick and I just pop it over the line, and it just feels like all right, good, you know I helped, I scored, and then you just it just lifts you and everybody else. Right. You you know one guy he actually reminds me of is he's like this this like generation of Mark Paris. Yeah, he's our he's our Mark Paris now. Like we always have that one guy who just stands in front of the net. He's that. Yep. I love it because that that's what we need. Like if you looked at our power play, which hasn't been really good recently, but when it was clicking, you have someone in front of the net. Look at all good teams; they have someone in front of the net, and they know how to cycle. So like when that guy in front of the net, you know, peels off to go behind, when the puck goes behind the net, somebody else takes that spot until the puck goes out front, and then they switch again. At least that's that's how I learned how power plays work because I was always the guy in front of the net because I'm ridiculously tall. <laughs> um, so why don't you give us your opinion on uh, the rest of the league right now, if you have an opinion on what you think the rest of the league and what the playoffs will look like? Um, I re- really like all the matchups right now because everyone hates each other that would be playing each other would make the first round amazing, which would be like one of the best things that could happen to hockey with every, pretty much every matchup being a somewhat rivalry matchup or have like some bad blood that happened at some point between teams. Right. And then, you know, like every team in it, I think could win it. Like there's nobody who is like, all right, that guy's going to lose in the first round. It's just going to be garbage or, you know, all they might squeak by and lose. I think every team has a shot that they could go because every team has the talent and they all have the goaltending to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, why don't you give us a... We actually asked Andy this before as well. Yeah. We're going to do a, a fan Stanley Cup final pick. Okay, so it's going to be the Islanders. Who, who, who are the Islanders playing in the fan pick? Oof. You know, that one matchup you want to see as a fan. As a fan? Ooh. Um, I know you're going to say the Blue Jackets. No, because you know what? If the Blue Jackets get that far, they're going to be riding so much momentum. That fan base is going to be ridiculous. So going into Columbus is going to be insanely hard. Oh, but then again, that meme that was out during the lockout that people said that they'd rather watch the Islanders versus Blue Jackets playing the finals than have a lockout. Would come That's to. true. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't care who we played because be I just want to win. <laughs> like, it's every team, it's going to be hard. There's no, there's, like I said, there's no team. Who is just gonna be like, oh yeah, I want to play them because you know we'll beat them because you know like like we were talking about before and what was that like, oh six when we played Tampa, and it was like, oh yeah, you know we beat them four times in the season that's the best matchup for us we could totally take them down and then we got housed. <laughs> okay, okay, now give us uh, realistic, the realistic, not just a fan point of view, Stanley Cup final pick. I'd say definitely. I think it's gonna be the Hawks from the West. I think they're gonna they're gonna go. And from the east, I, I, I think we, we get to the second, maybe the third round, but I don't think we're going to go all the way, unfortunately. I hate saying that because I want to believe it's so hard that we will. Right. Um, so I think the Penguins might get upset because they're just so good that they might be cocky about it and just, you know, it might happen. So it's either going to be the Pens from the east if they don't get upset, which could happen because you never know, or um, I'd like to say the Bruins. The Bruins. Another good pick. No, yeah, I, I definitely like the Bruins. If the Islanders obviously don't make it that far, the Bru the Bruins are that team that they're just they're just bigger than everybody. They're bigger and uh, stronger, and their their only issue is can they get that scoring? They're they're the Iceland yeah. team from the second Mighty Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> they all have mustaches and beards, though. And also, they they want it too. They have, uh, they have the experience to go. Right. Except they don't. Have, they have a different goalie. Yeah, but. 
Tuka Rask, you know, he's good. <laughs> it's not like they have somebody who's like, oh, you know, we're we're scoring five, six goals, and we're winning by like six, four, six, five, and stuff like that. Right. It's, right. you know, they're scoring five, six goals, and he's only letting in one to two. <laughs> one interesting thing that would happen, though, if the Islanders did win the Cup is would Tim Thomas go to the White House? <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> if he doesn't play a game for us, he doesn't get his name on the Cup, but he doesn't get a ring, so. That's true. Well, actually, you can vote for a guy to get a ring. So I wonder if DPH. Would, I wonder who would vote for D. They should put. Uh, they should put the guy with the gold hair, Craig, on the. Yeah, they since should give me gone, a ring. Since, since he's gone, uh, they've been playing a lot better. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so we would like to thank Tom for joining us. Thanks, Any Tom. Time. Um, this was very insightful. Uh, we got a little history on the BOA. Uh, we're going to play a little more Division One Point One for everybody, and we're going to come right back and wrap this up. S&D Podcast is no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Hockey League or any of its affiliates. Hey, welcome back to the S&D Podcast, sponsored by Schmuck Sports uh, Radio. Dan here with Steve. Uh, tonight was a very good show. Um, yes. Thank th- you, Andy and Tom, um, with their insight about the Islanders. It was a very good show. Yes, it was um, very interesting to learn about the uh, history of the Blue and Orange Army as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Uh, we we see those guys every every time we go to the games, but we don't know them. Um, definitely. Well, we know them, but we don't know the history behind. Well, them. yeah, we we didn't know how it started and everything like that. So it was very cool to see. Um, Special thanks to Andy, who is um I I went on his site um eyes on aisles eyes on aisles yeah say that ten times, um fast but um that's a great site I actually read a few articles before he was on the show tonight and he's a very good writer so if you're in, if you're interested in with the Islanders and everything Islanders uh go ahead and give him a look he he seems very in depth and he's been an Islander fan like he said a bunch of times thirty five years so that's uh, only he's only missed five years as an Islander fan, with their extent, uh, with them being around. So, that's pretty good. Uh, as for basketball, um, Knicks and Nets, uh, interesting playoffs. Um, they just got to keep it up, and the Knicks got to keep it rolling, and hopefully, advance to the play uh, next round for both teams. So, what what do you what do you, what's your takes on those before we wrap it up? Um. I'm excited to see how the rest of their series goes. I'm excited to see. Uh, I think I'm most excited to see how they're gonna rea- the Knicks are gonna react to going to Boston. Yeah. I think that's the most exciting thing about that series. How will they react to the changes in the atmosphere in Boston? Because you know it's gonna be insane. Also, uh, players, the teams played in Boston this year, of course, but they've never played in a Boston playoff game. Well, no, they did two years ago. Not not all the players on this team. That's majority, what I meant. M- majority of the team. Um, and the people that haven't are veteran enough to be there. Right. But, you uh, know, like, Prigioni wasn't there. Um, but they'll, they'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine, but, you know, it's a lot of emotion. What I'm worried about is the emotion of what happened. It's the first Celtics home game since what happened. So, right. you know it's going to be a circus there. Um, we had a great show tonight. Excited show. for next week. Um, we're still going to get in touch with Division 1.1 so we'll look out for that episode um, thanks for listening hope everybody enjoys the sports week let's go Knicks Islanders and I hope Marty wins a couple games <laughs> and Nets. Uh, Nets Rangers I'll let you say the let's go Rangers thing. yeah I, <laughs> I know it's tougher for you uh, Mets and, and Yankees. Uh, we promise we will get some baseball in here eventually. Yeah, we no, we, we will. We will. Um, 100% will. It's just crazy, like we mentioned. Um, We're not used to all of our teams being in the playoffs. Four, yeah, four of the five teams that are in the local area for winter sports have made the playoffs. So thanks one more time for listening tonight. Hope you all enjoyed it. Check out eyesonisles.com. Bingo. They have a Facebook page, they have a Twitter page, they have a website. Also check out schmucksports.com. Uh, our buddy Keith, the co-founder, as well as Ian, the gentleman who uh, who was joining us on the draft special, had a nice mock draft. Um, 
So check that out. Don't forget to check out the draft preview show, even though by the time you listen to this show, the draft will be over. So have a good night, guys. Have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good week.